Welcome to video lecture G7. This one is on least squares approximations to solving linear systems. I'll be your moderator, Tom Roby, and here are the outline and objectives. So we'd like to utilize the machinery of orthogonal projections that we've built up to find so-called least square solutions to inconsistent linear systems, Ax equals b, where b is not in the column space of A. So we know way back from the first few weeks of class is that it's perfectly possible that if you've got an m by n matrix A and you've got b is an r to the m, it, there's not necessarily clear that there'll be a solution to Ax equals b. And when there is, it's called consistent. And there might be multiple solutions or a unique solution. But when it doesn't happen, they're, called, they're inconsistent. And they come up all the time. Sometimes they come up just because there are errors built into uh, the data that you have. So there would be if you had your if you were working in a world where all your data came in with 100% accuracy, maybe there would be a solution, but there isn't one um, because of those kinds of inaccuracies. Or it's also possible that uh, there is no solution, but you still need to figure out what input you want to put into the system, right? So if you think about A as representing a system, X is your inputs and B is your outputs, then you're shooting for a certain output. There's no X that gives you that exact output. What's the best approximation you can get? Okay, so that's what this is all about. Um, and once we've talked about that, then we'll discuss the special cases where, say, the columns of A are orthogonal. Um, then it's very easy to, to write down the solutions. And, or if we have a QR factorization of A, um, so where Q is a, is a, has columns which are orthonormal, then in either of those cases, it's very easy to get the solutions. Um, but so here, here's the definition. So let A be an M by N matrix, and B is an R to the M. Think of A as representing the transformation that takes you from R to the N to R to the M. So it inputs vectors X and R to the N. It outputs vectors B and R to the M. And the least square solution X hat is the one which makes the difference between the thing I wanted to get to and the thing I can actually get to as small as possible. In other words, less than or equal to B minus AX for every X in RN. Okay? So the idea is, here's this green thing here, plane, is the column space of A. And the column space of A is everything that I can get to by applying A to X. So that's all, that's all I can, only places I can go. But then I want to get to B, which is out here. So the natural thing to do is to project B down into the subspace and say, OK, that's the closest point I can get to. Because this is in the column space, now I know there's some X hat, which when I apply A gets me to B hat. Okay? And then by the, you know, the least approximation theorem, any other point on the column space is going to be further away because it's going to have its distance is going to be the square root of this distance is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of those distances. Okay? So this is a, a bit of an inconvenient um, thing to work with, though, because how do you know if, that you found an x hat which satisfies this kind of inequality where you'd have to check infinitely many values. So it's a good conceptual definition, but here's the theorem which really lets us compute these things in practice. So it turns out that x hat, the least square solution to ax equals b, we'll have, it will be, x hat will be a least square solution to this matrix equation if and only if when I apply a transpose a to x, I get a transpose b. Okay? So you can think about it as I sort of took AX equals B and I applied A transpose to both sides. And that's the new equation I want to solve. Those are called the normal equations for AX equals B. Equations because, you know, as usual, a matrix equation usually represents multiple equations all compressed into a single piece of notation. And what's even better is that there always is at least, there always is at least one solution to this. Sometimes there can be multiple solutions, but there's always at least one solution. Okay? So how do we prove this? Well, let's write our matrix A as a string of columns. Okay, so remember the column space is just the set of all linear combinations of these columns. And now we'll take B and we'll project it down to B hat. So B hat is the projection of B onto its column space. Now, because this is in the column space, as I just said, there has to exist an X hat somewhere in R to the N so that A X hat is equal to B, this projection. By the orthogonal projection theorem, this distance, well, this distance is the minimum. That's, that's what I've used already. But I want to think about this. This is actually perpendicular to the column space, right? So to be perpendicular to the column space, 
that means it needs to be perpendicular to everything, every column of A, and conversely, if it's con perpendicular to every com column of A, it will be in the column space because that's enough to guarantee that it's perpendicular to any linear combination of the columns. Okay, so we've gotten this far. We've shown that this vector here, this, the thing I dropped vertically from B onto that plane, when I dot product it with B minus AX, I always get zero. Okay, right, because this is, all right. If you rewrite this in matrix form though, and so here's the key thing, right? If I, if I want to think about what this means, I just take A transpose is equal to the column vector A1. I guess I should write it that way. A2 dot 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 AN. Right, so I'm taking each of these columns and I'm multiplying it by B minus AX. So that's just B minus, or a B minus AX hat, right? So B minus AX hat is just some column vector here. And so I'm just taking, so taking the dot product of these things, just I take the dot product of A1 with this, I get zero. I take the dot product of that with this, I get zero. So this is, should be equal to zero, zero, dot, 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 zero, okay? But that's exactly saying that B minus AX, that A transpose applied to B minus AX is equal to zero. And if you rewrite that, that just says, expand it out, I get A transpose times B, that's this side, minus A transpose AX, that's this side equals zero, so these two things have to be equal. Okay? So it's really just some bookkeeping here that takes this being in the column space and makes it equivalent to this matrix equation. And this is really great because now we've taken a problem that we didn't know how to solve because how are we going to check this inequality held everywhere and turned it into a problem that we know how to solve perfectly well, which is all I have to do is solve an equation. A transpose AX, this is just a single matrix, and that's equal to some other vector. Okay, so let's see how this works in practice. Suppose that A is the matrix 1010023. So it's got those two columns in R3, and what I'm trying to get to is B equals minus 1, 2, 4. Okay, so the first step is to say, well, I really, what I really want to solve is A transpose A times something equals A transpose times B. Okay, so compute A transpose A. A transpose A is equal to um, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3 times A, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 3. And if you compute that out, you'll find that you get 5, 7, 7, 10. Okay. Now, A transpose B is equal to, all right, so I take 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, and I apply it to B was negative 1, 2, 4, and I get, let's see, when I do this, it looks like I get 7 and then 11. Okay. So my new equation, the normal equations, now become this matrix, 5, 7, 7, 10, Right, so I want, want to solve five, seven, seven, ten, whoops, times x one, x two should be equal to seven eleven. And there are multiple ways you can do this. You know, since it's a two by two matrix, maybe the fastest way to do it would be to take the inverse of this matrix and apply it to seven eleven. Right, so uh, let's do that, right? So then this implies that x1, x2 is equal. Okay, what's the inverse of this matrix? Well, remember you switch the things on the main diagonal and negate the things on the off diagonal, and you apply that to 711, 
and you get um, uh, my negative 7 and 6, if I did my math right. Okay, and so this is now x hat. This is the vector that gives me the best approximation. Okay, and in this case it turns out to be unique. And so now let's um, think about that a little bit more. So, so first of all, let me box this so you know that that's the right answer. And the question is, what happens when you apply A to this? Um, or what happens when you compare that to B? Okay, so um, let's write here. I guess I'll move over here. So B minus um, A times X hat. In this case is, all right, so b, the original b was negative 1, 2, 4. And the value that I'm actually getting, right, so this is the, this b minus the thing place where I am in the column space is the original matrix, 5, 7, 7, 10, times negative 7, 6. Okay, and so what's that? Well, this turns out to be... Uh, no. All right, what did I do wrong? This is a transpose A. But what I'm interested is in what happens when I put A there, right? So I want to put my original A here, which was 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3. And I multiply that. So I have negative 7 times this column plus 6 times this column. And so that gives me um, minus 1, 0, 4. Um, and so then when I subtract from this, I end up getting 0 to 0. Okay? Yes. So this is 0 to 0. So this vector is 0 to 0. And you could, that's sometimes called the residual. It's what's left over. And sometimes its length is called the least squares error. So the length of this vector is just 2. right? If it were, I would have to take the square root of the sum of the squares. I mean, I can do that here. But since I only have a one non-zero entry, it just becomes this number here. So it's 2. Okay, So that's a full out example of how to do the least squares algorithm in a case. Just to review, you took this matrix that wasn't square. You multiplied A transpose times A. That'll always give you a square matrix. And now you apply a transpose to B, you get 7, 11, and then you solve this new equation. A transpose A times x1, x2 equals 7, 11. You do it however you want. You can do row reduction if you wanted to the augmented matrix, or you can apply the inverse like I did. You get x hat is negative 7, 6. If all you want is the least square solution, you're done. If you also want to know how good a solution it was, you can subtract what happens when you apply A to this from what you were trying to get and find out how far off you were. Okay, so that's. Um, an example of how to do least squares uh, using the normal equations. Okay, so let's um, take a look at what the conditions are for when we're going to get a unique least square solution as opposed to possibly multiple ones. Um, so for an M by N matrix, the following are equivalent. That's what TFAE is, that AX equals B is a unique least square solution, B that A transpose A is invertible, and see that the columns of A are linearly independent. Okay, so actually, this isn't the fact that A and B are the same just follows from the normal equation, right? Because we've shown that the set of solutions, the least square solutions to a system, is exactly the set of actual solutions to A transpose A. And there's a unique solution for A transpose A equal to anything if A transpose A is invertible. And if it's not invertible, then we get multiple solutions. So that's that's basic. And then this uh, showing B and C is equivalent is not that hard. It's a, it's a good exercise. You have to be careful to remember that A is rectangular, so you can't use things like the invertible matrix theorem, which only apply to square matrices. But it turns out that the columns of A being linearly independent and thinking about things like how the rank can change, right? the rank of a matrix who's an M by N matrix whose columns are linearly independent is as big as it can, it's going to be M. So. Um, you can think about that on your own if you like, or, or look up the proof somewhere in a textbook. Um, 
But what I'd like to focus on right now is what if the columns of A are actually orthogonal? Right? We know that, that orthogonal and orthonormal bases are really good. And my claim is that then B hat and X hat are really easy to compute. Right? So let's take a look at an example. So if A is this matrix, it's easy to check that the inner product of those two columns is 0. And now what I want to find is what is uh, X hat and B hat. Well, remember, we've got this picture here. Now the column space of A is given by an orthogonal basis. And we know what the formula is for projecting a vector onto a subspace that has an orthogonal basis. So all we have to do for this problem is say, OK, um, leave myself plenty of space here. So B hat is going to be the projection onto the column space of A of the vector B. And so what do you do with that? Well, you remember you've got your formula where it's this ratio of dot products. Um, and so what's the ratio of dot products? I need to take B dotted with the first vector. That's the numerator. I get um, 8 here. And then I divide by the length of this vector, which is 4. And now I multiply it by that vector, which is 1, 1, 1, 1. And now what happens in the second one? I take this ratio of dot products, right? I take b and I dot it with this vector, so I get negative 12 minus 2, so I get negative 14 divided by the length of this vector, which is 9 plus uh, 1 plus 2 is 14. Wow, it must be a made up math teacher problem. And I multiply that by negative 3, 0, 1, 2. Okay, and so then what happens? Uh, I just compute this and I end up with 2 times this minus 1 times that. So, okay, so 2 minus minus 3 is 5. Um, 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. And um, 2 minus 2 is 0. So 5, 2, 1, 0 is the, so this is equal to b hat. Okay, but it's better than that, right? What is x hat? So here's the beautiful thing, right? Is that, well, multiplying a times x hat is just taking a linear combination of the columns of a, and that's exactly what I've done here. So what this equation exactly says is that um, that a times well, this is x1, and this is x2, right? So a times 2 negative 1 is equal to 5, 2, 1, 0 equals b hat. So therefore, 2 negative 1 is x hat. Okay, so we've computed b hat and x hat trivially once we've got an orthogonal basis. So that's, that's mostly what I wanted to show you here for that case. And now, remember that a QR factorization of a matrix A factors it as Q, where Q has orthonormal columns, and the, and the column space of Q is the same as the column space of A. So it's just the Gram-Schmidt result, right? Where you take the columns of A, you assume they're linearly independent, and you Gram-Schmidt them, and you get an orthonormal basis. And then R is the other thing that ha you have to have to make up the product of A equals QR. Okay, so we're assuming that I've got rank n, linear, li, n linearly independent columns, and a QR factorization, A equals QR. Then, for any B and R to the M, the uniquely square solution to AX equals B is given by, I can just write down a formula, X hat equals, take the inverse of R, the transpose of Q times B. Okay? And what's nice about this theorem is that there's not much left to do given all the machinery we've already built up. So here's the one-line proof. So a times x, well, we know that a is qr, so you can't stop me from replacing a by qr. And let's see what happens when we apply that to r inverse q transpose b. Well, qr times r inverse q transpose b, those r's in the middle cancel, because I have r, r inverse. 
I'm just left with QQ transpose B. But remember that QQ transpose was actually just gave us the, when the columns are orthonormal, this just gave us the actual projection of B onto B hat. So this is the projection onto the column space of A, which is the same as the column space of Q. It's a projection on the column space of Q of B, and that's just B hat. Okay? So therefore, we pick the right X because it has this property that when I apply A to it, I get B hat. Okay? So there we are. And you see the advantages of having things like these nice matrix decompositions into pieces where each piece has special properties, and you can use those properties to uh, prove things quite easily. Right? So this is, I mean, maybe you don't see the, the geometry of this instantly, but there really is lurking under the surface with all these projections. And this is the good picture to keep in mind for least squares. Uh, so that's it for this video lecture. Thank you so much for your kind attention.